Take it easy in that flight board, Freddy. Be careful. You too, Dad. Don't forget to sing a song of seatbelt safety. Huh? Oh, yeah. The seatbelt connected to the frame zone. The lap strap goes across the hip bone. The year is 1984. The Karate Kid has just hit theaters, Madonna is all the rage, and despite the 1964 law which required all new cars to be equipped with one, less than 20% of US drivers were wearing their seatbelts. Now, I don't know what material Madonna was made of, but the rest of America was still flesh, bone, and incredibly susceptible to the health dangers of car crashes. In fact, statistics of the time collected by the Federal Transportation Department cited traffic accidents as the leading cause of death for Americans aged 1 through 44. But there was a proven solution. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration estimated that, annually, over 8,000 traffic deaths could be prevented if more Americans adopted seatbelts. Unfortunately, more Americans weren't in the mood to adopt seatbelts. Especially in the government mandated sense, Transportation Secretary Elizabeth Doyle was proposing. I need some sucker to tell me how to drive. But you know what Americans were willing to adopt? The television. In 1984, the average American household watched over seven hours of television per day. Sensing this opportunity for a little softball manipulation, the U.S. Department of Transportation started an advertising campaign so that when teens tuned into MTV after a school day, they might be greeted with this. Kids watching their Sunday morning cartoons might catch a little of this. Even adults checking in on the evening news were targeted with ads like these, advocating for the safety and importance of wide-scale seatbelt use. More children in this country are killed and crippled from car crashes than any disease. We have a cure. See, the U.S. government had no realistic way of enforcing a wide-scale seatbelt law. With so many cars on the highway, there was no way for them to catch every non-belter. Or even the majority of non-belters. By airing public safety announcements, they were able to appeal to all ages of Americans and convince them that seatbelts were a vital safety measure and actually incite a change in society's view of seatbelts. The Buckle Up Media campaign fostered an internal desire to change seatbelt habits within the American public, and by the year 2000, over two-thirds of Americans were using seatbelts, and motor vehicle deaths per 100,000 people had dropped five points from 20 to 15. It's safe to say that Elizabeth Doyle made the right move here, and saved millions of American lives by instilling respect for healthy seatbelt habits. Sometimes kids have to remind grown-ups, yabba-dabba-buckle-up!